How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bill Stern with up-to-date news on the national picture in the world of sport. Today, an ever-growing enthusiasm for sports in general is reaching an all-time high. Surveys show that more than ever before, people are playing tennis and golf, going horseback riding, trap and skeet shooting, swimming, playing badminton, flying, hunting, skating, in fact, participating in all of the recreational sports. Of course, the surveys also point to the many very definite reasons for this tremendous national swing toward the enjoyment of the outdoor sport. First and most important, people just like to get outdoors where they can relax and have fun. Now, with today's shorter working hours, they can do it. In fact, the Committee for Economic Development points out that the 79% of the country's population employed in commerce and industry will now have at least two and possibly three days a week to devote to recreation. Then, too, the added millions of Americans who were expertly trained by the armed forces and taught the proper use of firearms were given an entirely new appreciation of the value of outdoor recreation. The federal and state governments are promoting additional state and national parks, wildlife restoration projects, camping grounds, playgrounds, and beaches, not only to help combat juvenile delinquency, but to build the physical and mental health of the nation. And two, through the efforts of the nation's sportsmen, coordinated under the United States Fish and Wildlife Service Program and state conservation departments, the supply of fish and game has been greatly increased. Both the automotive and transportation industry are spending millions of dollars promoting travel to America's outdoor playgrounds from coast to coast. They, too, are getting in on the national swing to sports. Naturally, the sports enthusiasts are looking to the retailers of their community, not only for sports equipment, but, and this is equally important, they're looking for expert guidance in the selection of that equipment. The demand for competent, experienced guidance in buying sporting goods has literally created a brand new profession for athletes and sports lovers in every city and town in the country. These men are both good salesmen and good sportsmen. This new type of sporting goods salesman is usually an authority on at least two or three sports and has had some experience in almost all of them. He's able to speak the language of the customer. The modern hardware merchants are hiring these young sportsmen, training them in the fundamentals of salesmanship and merchandising, then putting them in charge of the sports department of the store. And the results? They're more than satisfactory because this salesman inspires confidence in his customers. He's not a novice. He's an experienced sportsman, and he knows what he's talking about. For example, listen. So you're going fishing with your dad, eh? Yep. Dad's going to show me how to get the big ones. I figure it's time for him to learn. Fine. You're in for a lot of fun. I was out over the weekend, and the big ones were sure hitting the surface base. Oh, boy. All day? No, that was just in the early morning and late evening. During the day, I had better luck trolling. They run that way, all right. Now, here's a rod that's balanced just about right for a boy. Not too light, yet light enough to get a thrill whenever the little ones strike. Feels just about right. Oh, you can be really proud of that, Ron. It's got a safe and comfortable grip and a snappy whip, too. That reel is the anti-backlash level winding type. You can cast with that all day and your arm won't get tired. Sounds swell to me. Okay, Dad? Okay. Now, here's a smooth, easy casting nylon line you'll need. All right. And now some plugs. Yes, sir. That's the way it goes. The selling sportsman, this new type of salesman, inspires buying confidence in the novice as well as the old timers. He not only speaks the language, but he speaks it with authority and shows genuine interest. And that, as far as the customers are concerned, is even more important than price. That's why they keep coming back. The salesman whose star material, who wants to be up with the champs, keeps on his toes and up to date. He gets plenty of dope from the literature prepared especially to help retail salesmen by the manufacturers of sports equipment so he can properly explain and demonstrate all the specific features in the merchandise he sells. He always has the latest news on the fish and game regulations in his as well as the surrounding areas. 
and he knows the best hunting and fishing spots, too. He's always up to date on any changes in the national rules of all the sports. He's not just a salesman. When it comes to sporting goods and sports, he's really a sports specialist. And what's more, his boss, the hardware dealer himself, sees to it that the sports department is always amply stocked with a well-assorted line of sporting goods to meet the varying demands of every sporting season. His selection of merchandise is geared to meet the needs of his particular local community. In other words, if his community has the natural facilities for winter sports, water sports, golf, hunting, or what have you, he has plenty of stock on hand to supply these particular sportsmen with what they want, when they want it. But wait a minute. We've been talking about a well-rounded stock of all sporting goods. Look at that flock of guns and ammunition. How about it, young fella? Is there an exceptional number of hunters in your town? Why, no, Bill, not at all. Although I'll admit we had more hunters this year than we ever had before. But that's true all over the country. I guess we're just about average. Then why all the guns? Did the boss just go overboard on his supply of guns and ammunition? Gosh, no. This stock is just about right. It's a complete line. 22 centerfire rifles and shotguns. And plenty of ammunition to fit them all. No, we're not overboard. We've just got the works. People are funny when it comes to buying guns. They have a pretty good idea of what they want before they even come in. The boss and I found out that if we were going to gain any ground in the sporting goods business, it meant First of all, a complete line of guns and ammunition. What do you mean, first of all? For a very definite reason. For instance, our jobber salesman and I were talking about a chart on that same subject. It appeared in the Retail Merchandisers Club Bulletin. Here it is. These figures are for total volume sold. Golf goods, almost 13%. Baseball, about 5%. But guns and ammunition, 39% of the total volume. And with another 13% for fishing equipment, that leaves about 30% for all the rest. You see, there's never been a time when so many people have been acquainted with firearms. There's a tremendous interest in guns and ammunition. Then, too, guns have a swell attention-getting value. The sale of a gun is usually the forerunner of the sale of several other items. There, Bill, does that answer your question on why the boss wants us to carry a complete line of guns and ammunition? It sure does, and thanks. Yes, there's a lot to it. You have to know about advertising window displays, store promotion, and even where to put the sports department in the store. Of course, that's the part of the business I'm still learning. The boss is the real expert on that stuff. He was in the hardware business before I was born. How about it, Mr. Hardware Merchant? Will you give us some of the angles on layout and display from your standpoint? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Stan, I've been in this business a good many years. There are a lot of principles and facts that I've had to learn the hard way. Then, much of what I know, I've learned from my contacts with the representatives of the Retail Hardware Association, reading the trade publications, salesmen, and even my competitors. Now, you mentioned the subject of display. As far as I'm concerned, display begins with the store itself the impression it creates. I'm even considering a new storefront, as modern as this. Then if I want people to come in and keep coming back, because that means profit for me, the store has to be attractive as a unit. So I try to keep it well lighted and have the fixtures modern. Then I try to make it easy for customers to shop around. So my departments are located and the displays set up according to demand and fast selling items. I try to get the fullest use of my floor space with lots of shopping islands. Yet, there's plenty of aisle space, too. But I'm forgetting. Your special interest is in our sports department. Well, seems like most everybody's is these days. That's why I decided to have the best. A leading sports department in town. It's a traffic builder. And what's more, I've got it right up front, well exposed to all the store traffic. When people come in my store, they not only see the sports department, they're in it. And that's exactly what we want. Nowadays, with everybody spending more and more money for recreation, 
Well, naturally, I want to make it easy for him to spend it in my store. Like every other retail merchant, I learned a long time ago that attractive displays can account for over 50% of the store's sales. As you can see, my fixtures and shopping islands are the latest types. They get the merchandise out in the open, where it can be seen. These 5 by 10 islands were especially recommended by my association representative. I think they're ideal for displaying seasonal items, and they sell the merchandise with a minimum of handling. That goes for mass display and feature displays, too. I try to keep up to date on everything, especially on displays and latest fixtures, the kind that encourage people to sell themselves because they can both see and handle the goods. That open rack for guns is a swell example of what I mean. It's not only good looking, but it's an attractive display too. However, the main thing is, it lets the shooters know that I carry a full line of every popular type. It says, here's the place to buy your guns and ammunition. Say, I'd better go to work. Looks like we're getting busy over there. There are some very logical reasons for the steady increase in the sports department business. And one of the most important reasons is the new type sporting goods salesman we've been talking about. This man realizes that the success of the department means money in his pocket. Naturally, then, he's always on his toes, taking advantage of every opportunity to build business and profits in his department, every idea to promote sales and bring in customers. He's really enthusiastic about selling sports equipment. Other ideas of his include the time payment plan, the layaway club, ideas that help sell some of the higher priced items. Then too, to help raise his batting average, he even builds a prospect list of future customers by keeping tabs on the items in which customers have shown interest. In addition to this, whenever possible, he gets a record of the sportsmen to whom hunting and fishing licenses have been issued in his area. This gives him a sales promotion mailing list that just can't be topped in any league. And, like many others in this new selling field of his, he makes arrangements to sell hunting and fishing licenses right in the store. The business advantages in this extra service are obvious. Speaking of extra service as a goodwill as well as traffic builder in the store, the sportsman's bulletin board is really a champ. The bulletin board is another little extra service that means a lot to the sportsmen who come in the store. It carries the latest information on the state and federal game regulations, as well as announcements concerning local sporting events. There are many smart merchandising activities that the live wire sporting goods salesman can develop in order to better his score, do a more effective job. Yes. Today, we in the world of sport welcome these new type salesmen, not only because they are sports lovers, but because of their zeal and their knowledge. They're doing so much to aid and advance the national swing towards outdoor life, to do their share in the task of building the mental and physical health of the nation. So best of luck to the selling sportsman, the merchant professional in the new age of sport. And now, a man you know, and a man who knows you, Mr. Rivers Peterson, Managing Director of the National Retail Hardware Association. I have watched the shooting of this motion picture with a great deal of interest. It shows a merchandise arrangement that is pretty close to ideal for the successful operation of a sports department in a retail hardware store. Perhaps all of you cannot have such an ideal arrangement. Nevertheless, each can keep his sights high and aim for this ideal. That is the course which assures the best results. People buy with confidence from someone they consider an authority. Therefore, it is good business to have a young, enthusiastic sportsman in charge of your sports department. If necessary, hire and train such a man. People will go out of their way to buy from the person who knows the product he is selling and how to use it. It is important to maintain an ample, well-rounded stock. After all, if you don't have the merchandise, you can't sell it. 
and then display that merchandise attractively, as has been done in the picture you've seen, and promote its sale in every possible way. In the days that are ahead, to ensure success, you must keep your sights high. And whatever you do, aim to do it better than anyone has done it in your town before. Thank you.